Hi everyone, very good evening and welcome to yet another life cycle, the fixed time slot of 8.15pm and all of you know after having finished the trematodes and having started with the cystodes, we've done two organisms in cystodes already, number one is Diaphilobothrium latum and the second one that we discussed was H. nana. Now here onwards we move on to the next uh, organism under this family and today we are going to discuss about Tinea solium and Saginata with minor differences, roughly their life cycles are the same. Okay, so this is the daily ritual of 8.15pm that is happening on the YouTube channel. Apart from that, each morning there is a kickstart morning session that is ongoing and uh, this kickstart morning is uh, going to be at 7.45 whereas at 4.30 in the the evening like today we had numericals of genetics tomorrow we have hypersensitivity mnemonics so to give you a quick recap into this tomorrow at 7 45 a.m we are going to meet in the morning at kickstart session with bacteria then at 4 30 p.m we are going to meet with mnemonics of hypersensitivity these are on the unacademy app and they are free for everyone to view and then at 8 15 p.m we are having the youtube life cycle of the day Okay, so having said that, let me begin with the life cycle that we have and that is the life cycle of Tinea saginata and Tinea solium, both of which will definitely involve the man. But Tinea solium is between the man and the pig and Tinea saginata is between the man and the cow or the cattle. So please remember Tinea solium is man and pig, Tinea saginata is man and cattle. So let me show you what the life cycle looks like. This is exactly the life cycle. I can say I'm showing you the life cycle for both exactly. So I have a man out here. I also have a pig. I also have a cattle depending on whether I'm dealing with solium or whether I'm dealing with saginata. Let me dissect this life cycle and we'll be able to understand it. So let me start number one. This is a human. How did the human get the infection? be it tinea saginata or tinea solium how did the human get the infection so the human or we get the infection by eating raw or undercooked meat so it could be beef it could be pork so depending on the organism solium or saginata whatever meat if we eat that meat is infected so if we consume undercooked meat or if we consume raw meat this is one way by which this organism has come into the body why because whatever meat we have eaten the infected meat, the pork or the beef that you have eaten, that can have cysticerci in the muscle. The meat that you are eating, that can have cysticerci. So what have you done uh, in this life cycle up till now? Ingestion of undercooked meat has happened. After ingestion, obviously, the adult worms are going to form. So what you've consumed in this life cycle is the cysticerci. After that, after going into the intestine, the scolex is going to attach into the intestine and the adults are going to form life. If the adults have formed, eggs will be laid. Well, please remember the eggs or the gravid proglottids. Okay, so scolex, which I'm talking about, is the head end of the uh, parasite. Then you have a neck, so head and neck, and then you have a proglottid. Proglottid, proglottid has all the genitals, the uterus, the vagina, the ovary. Okay, so the gravid proglottids or the eggs, they are going to be passed off in the environment. Okay, once they are out in the environment, now comes the role of that intermediate host. The role of cattle in case of Tinea saginata and the role of pigs in case of Tinea solium. So please remember, because these are passed in the environment, the eggs and the proglottids are passed in the environment, the pigs and the cattle can ingest the vegetation. So if they've passed in the environment, they're somewhere in the vegetation. You can see a cattle grazing over here. So once they're eating on that vegetation, they can ingest these eggs and the gravid proglottids. Okay, so the infection has reached to the respective animal. After reaching into the respective animal, after these animals have eaten the eggs or the proglottids, the oncospheres from inside the egg, they are going to hatch out. They've eaten it, the oncosphere. So if this was the, if this is the egg, inside the egg, all of you know, there's an oncosphere with hooklets that is going to hatch out. That is going to then penetrate the intestine of this 
animal the pig or the cattle and is going to go till the musculature the muscle that is where these onchospheres will go and develop into cysti cerci so what happened quick repetition over here what did the animal eat the animal ingested while grazing and while eating the vegetation animal ended up eating either the eggs or the proglottids after animal has eaten it the onchosphere is going to come out of the egg because animal has eaten it so in the intestine it will penetrate and it will go till the muscle after going in the muscle it is going to develop into the cysti cerci and that is the form that we get when we ingest undercooked or raw meat so pretty much the life cycle was very easy the host is different as you can see repeating again pig in case of tenia solium and cattle in case of tenia saginata so everything else in the life cycle pretty much looks easy so if i ask you for a quick difference between the two organisms the eggs of both of them look the same the eggs of mostly all the cystodes look the same the difference that lies is in the the scolex that's the head part and the proglottid so do you want to quickly revise that it's hardly going to take a minute so let us quickly do the differences between tenia saginata and tenia solium like i've told you the scolex or the head this is the head okay this has a lot of differences the proglottids are going to have a lot of differences so how have i learned it please remember there's one mnemonic which i was telling you yesterday and day before yesterday is when we are talking that on the scolex on the head which are the cystodes which don't have hooklets don't have hooklets so we had learned all the ta 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 organisms have done ta ta to the hooklets they don't have the hooklets so out of tenia saginata and solium which will not have the hooklets in the head end it's tenia saginata so tenia saginata no hooklets yesterday i was teaching you h diminuta again h diminuta scolex has no hooklets day before yesterday i taught you diphyllobothrium latum lata no hooklets on the ho scolex so remember tenia saginata h diminuta and diphyllobothrium lata or latum they've done tata to the hooklets they don't have the hooklets at the scolex or the head end all these mnemonics we'll be revising because once we finish all the cystodes we have a revision class also like we had for trematodes we'll have for cystodes also all these mnemonics will come in place that's day after tomorrow okay anyway so tenia saginata scolex doesn't have hooklets because tata so no hooklets solium will obviously have hooklets now guys everything for tenia saginata is going to be more if i ask you which is longer which has a greater length see saginata is a bigger word than solium na so saginata long word long organism which has a larger head end larger scolex you will say large everything large saginata which of them can have pigment the suckers can have pigment you will say saginata which has a longer neck saginata how more number of proglottids saginata overall measurement more of the gravid segment saginata so please remember all these measurements are becoming more in saginata let me move to the next part of the table in the next part of the table fine both of them will have the uterus but then the confusion is which of them has a vagina which of them has a vagina which of them has an accessory lobe of the ovary so remember vagina okay remember vagina saginata so vagina is in saginata so the way you write remember which of them is going to have the vagina so saginata is going to have the vagina which of them is going to have the accessory lobe of the ovary so remember solium has the ovary solium has the accessory lobe of ovary and vagina is present in vagina is present in saginata easy to remember okay which has more number of follicles in the testes everything more in number goes to saginata the bigger name more number of follicles in the testes saginata okay more number of branches of the uterus 15 to 30 more number of branches see solium has only 5 to 10 more number of branches of the uterus saginata all numerical things more for saginata 
coming to now you've done the proglottid the genitals in the previous one you've done the head end differences larger head uh, pigmented head longer neck everything long and large and length was saginata same for proglottids all the number things were more for saginata remember saginata had the vagina and solium solium had the accessory lobe of the ovary what do we have to know next what about the larval form and what about the egg and the hosts that is important so for both of them the definitive host is man for both of them like you saw in the life cycle the definitive host is man for saginata you remember it was cow and for solium you remember it was pig so one of the students gave me this mnemonic once in class that ma'am cow is definitely bigger in size than a pig so saginata had to have everything bigger that is why cow is for saginata and pig is for solium okay having done that you know the definitive hosts you know the intermediate hosts what about the egg so remember out of tinea saginata and tinea solium whose egg can cause infection in us whose egg or ova can cause infection in man in solium the o for ova or egg is m for man it is infective to man not in saginata saginata doesn't have the m so the egg is not infective to man egg is also done talking about the larva remember the larva of tinea saginata is known as cysticercus bovis bovis should remind you of cattle so saginata it is cysticercus bovis it is present in the cow not in the man it is present in the bovis it is present in the cow not in the man in tinea solium you call it cellulose in tinea solium you call it cysticercus cellulose and it is present both in the pig and the man i am repeating for all of you when we are talking about the egg the egg of which one is infective to man so the egg of solium is infective to man okay saginata is not infective to man talking about the larva for saginata cattle related cow related you call the larva cysticercus bovis and it is found only in the cow in solium you call it cysticercus cellulose and that is found in the pig and the man i hope that is okay both of them we are eating the cysticercus remember we are eating undercooked meat so intestinal manifestation is going to happen in both but in which of them can the larva be present in the man also and can the egg be infective to the man also and other than intestine it can cause other manifestations cysticercosis with solium remember with solium you can see cysticercosis why because these eggs these eggs are infective to man so these eggs can go into the intestine these eggs can penetrate the git they can go to different organs and cause cysticercosis that can't happen with saginata because the egg is not infective to man in solium in solium the egg was infective to man so it can cause cysticercosis you know neurocysticercosis it can go to the brain muscle eye involvement so various organ involvement is possible with that so please remember please remember intestinal is happening obviously with both on eating but cysticercus can have cysticercosis can happen when the egg will penetrate the git and go to different different organs and that will happen in case of solium so let me ask you a quick question now first and foremost image if i show you this particular picture what do you see this is the head end this is what all of you were reading as the scolex and here you can see these are these round round suckers that are present i see the head end having hooklets can you see that the head end has hooklets if the head end has hooklets do you call it tinea saginata or do you call it solium so you will say ma'am in saginata it was tata to the hooklets so saginata head end will not have hooklets this must be the head end of solium first question you've cracked let me tell you the second question let's see if you can answer it it's a multiple option question tinea saginata is differentiated from tinea solium by the presence of so pick up the things which you feel are there in tinea saginata does tinea saginata have a short neck no tinea saginata had everything the word is bigger so it had longer length was everything more so it doesn't have a short neck it has a longer neck okay eggs are not infective to man this seems right because in solium the eggs were infective to man not in saginata 
Okay. Hooklets are there on the Skolex in Sajinata? No, Sajinata had no hooklets. Tata to the hooklets, not right. Four large pigmented suckers. Yes, everything large, long, big was with the big word. Pigmentation was also with the Sajinata. So, all the big things were with Sajinata. So, what are the two things? Egg is not infective to man is a correct statement. Four large pigmented suckers is also a correct statement. Guys, what's the... Um, life cycle if i can quickly recapitulate for you this is the final life cycle that you have in front of you you have a man as definitive host in both in tinea solium you have the pig and in tinea saginata you have the uh, cattle well that finishes off two important organisms in this quick session and i hope you got not only the life cycle but the difference in the adult forms of both as well a small homework for all of you do get back and read these life cycles thoroughly along with the life cycle flip through pages of the organisms so that every day in 10 minutes you're also finishing off and parasitology is on the whole going to be over so after i teach you the life cycle giving another five minutes and opening your notes and quickly going through other clinical features is not going to harm us is going to make us finish parasitology by the end of this month i hope all of you are benefiting from it guys see you tomorrow morning at 7 45 the topic for the morning session is gram negative kokai we are going to talk about questions of niceria tomorrow evening 4 30 pm we are going to discuss in half an hour all the mnemonics of hypersensitivity disorders and tomorrow at 8 15 we'll have the next cystode of this family so watch out for that thank you so much for joining in have a great day